Hi everybody, welcome to Tuesday Talk. I have a lot to talk about today, but I'm, you know, I'll still try to keep it at a reasonable uh, length of video. Um, it is cold. <laughs> I'm wearing I'm wearing a cozy sweater. I actually uh, put socks on uh, this morning, probably for the first time in I don't know. It feels like months. I had to go like, where's my socks? So my toes were so cold. Um, yeah, I live I live on the west coast uh, in Canada about two hours north of Seattle, if, and that sort of gives you an idea of, you know, where I'm, I'm situated. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, whatever Washington State is getting, we're pretty much getting, and we've got, you know, rainy, cloudy. We're getting into that rainy season, uh, which is cold and damp. Um, but anyways, that's, that's, all, that's all good, and uh, I want to talk today uh, I want to talk about exercise. I was asked that question and asked if I would talk about it. Um, and I, I assume in relation to, to myself and my journey, um, because I'm certainly no expert in anything. The other thing I'm going to talk about is my lab reports that I got this week. They were flagged <laughs> by the lab as being out of range. So I'm going to get to that in a minute. First, let's let's talk about exercise. So uh, right around the time that I started keto, I also had a major knee injury. I tore my meniscus in two places, and it was so bad that I was on crutches for quite some time and had to undergo surgery uh, to repair it. So it w so that happened. That was around 2012, I believe. So the surgery happened, but um, the after effect of that, it, it, they couldn't repair it 100%. And when they went in there, they discovered I had quite a bit of arthritic damage in my knee. And uh, really what I need is a knee replacement. That's what I was told at the time. But because I was in my 50s, <laughs> they kind of have a policy that they don't do knee replacements until you're over 60. So uh, that was put on hold and I have spent the last how many every year since then, 10 years, kind of limping and being able to only do limited exercise. So. I lost the bulk of my weight loss. So, so far it's, it's over 125 pounds. I, I need to like sit down and, and actually figure that out. I've just, it's been so busy. I don't even have time for that. Um, over 125 pounds is the bottom line is what I've lost. Most of that I lost without any exercise. I just changed my eating habits. I went low carb, then keto, then carnivore, and now I'm kind of living somewhere around ketovore, which I explained what all that was, those labels, last week, and I'll link that video below if you want to get that a more precise definition of what, what that means. But for me, what it means is mostly meat, some seasonings, coffee, and the occasional stray back to keto if I'm with family or have some kind of engagements like a company dinner or whatever. It's kind of where I am today. Um, so yeah, it's possible to lose weight without exercise. Um, and, and the reason I went through those variations of, of keto or low carb to keto to, is because eventually the weight loss stops and you gotta take a few other things away or do something different. Now, funny enough, I've kinda just, you know, I, I, I was really upset that they couldn't do a knee replacement right away. Um, but now not so much and I, I haven't been pushing for one even though you know I am in that range now I am over 60 I'm 64 and uh, I could I could push for one but funny enough losing all that weight it feels a whole lot better um, it's the pain is still there and I and I, I but I don't feel it all the time it's more like if I've if I've been on my feet a lot 
Um, now, to exercise, you kind of have to be on your feet a lot. And I do routinely, I, I, I wear a Fitbit now, and I do routinely get between eight and 10,000 steps a day, even on days that I don't exercise. Um, and let me say, it's like formal exercise. Um, walk, you know, I do have to walk the dogs. I do, I, you know, even going a trip to Costco can get me three or 4,000 steps. I mean, it's amazing how the steps accumulate. If, if you just sort of leave a semi-active lifestyle, you know, some gardening and walking and shopping, uh, those things all do add up. I'm not like just sitting around all day. So, but that said, I actually really enjoy exercise. There's, there's some exercises that I love. One of them is Zumba, which I can't really do anymore because although I'm able to, you know, be on my feet a lot, I'm able to, you know, get 10,000 steps without too much pain to my knee. Zumba is a lot of twisting and, and that sort of thing. And, and so I'm a little leery of that. What I have been doing uh, is Aquafit. Uh, since April, uh, when I moved into this place, well, they, the pool wasn't open in April. They opened it sometime in May. We've had a long, glorious summer. And at, it's an outdoor pool, which I love. And here they have Aquafit for residents. I can go three times a week. Don't have to pay. It's just part of the strata. And uh, so I go three times a week to Aquafit. Uh, but the pool has just closed. And so uh, that was a concern to me because I, I was feeling like, okay, you know, I'm, I've gotten used to that three times a week exercise. What can I do? And just funny enough, a week or so ago, someone in my group recommended a, a video channel, a YouTube channel. It's called Get Fit with Rick. And I just love it. Uh, and his uh, videos count steps. So you can go, I mean, he's got so many videos and you can go through them and go, oh, I need 2000 steps to, to get to my goal. And <clears throat> 2000 steps is roughly a 15 minute video. And not only that, he's got multiple 2000 step videos as well as three, four, you know, he's got the whole gamut depending on what you need to do that day or want to do that day. You can also pick, uh, music likes. So for example, the first one that I picked, I didn't even know what it was. It was kind of a, a hip hop type thing, which is not really my thing, but that's okay. I enjoyed it anyways. I got my 2000 steps. Um, it, it was fun. The 15 minutes went really fast. And then I started looking through and then I found one. It was all Whitney Houston. Loved that. That's more my speed of music and uh, really enjoyed that. So I'm, I'm gonna make myself a little playlist of some kind for the, you know, maybe some two, three and 4,000 step videos. Uh, beyond that, I don't, I don't, that would be too, too taxing on my knee, I think, to do all in one go. So I'm gonna put that link below. Um, who knows, maybe you'll like it. Um, I, I love it and uh, because it kind of, uh, helps me with uh, keeping my goals on my Fitbit, then that's another reason. So that's my take on exercise. I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say you must exercise. <laughs> I'm doing it because I like it. I like having that. Just, just, I feel good. And uh, so there you have it. Okay. Let's get to my lab report. <laughs> So I went to the doctor a couple of weeks ago. It was the first time I had a doctor's visit since before COVID. So it was also the first time in a few years since I've had any labs done. I was a little nervous because I knew uh, from just everything that, you know, I see other people and, and everything I've read. Chances are because of the fact that I've been doing carnivore and ketovore, probably my cholesterol was going to go up. Um, and I, you know, here where I live, it's really hard to have a family, like it's hard to find a family doctor. When you have one, you've got to hang on to them. I mean, I, she's an hour away and I drive an hour to see her because it's impossible to find a new family doctor here. There's a severe shortage. 
government is trying to address it. I, you know, I don't know when, if, how that will happen, but, but you know, they definitely have a problem here with family doctors. So I need to keep her no matter if she's unreasonable or not, um, you know, for if I need something. Uh, luckily, I'm on no medication, so I, you know, I have that freedom. I don't have to see her very often. But because I hadn't seen her in a long time and I needed to do some screening tests, um, I kept getting letters, you know, saying it was time for this one and that one, um, you know, because I'm in that age group. I thought, okay, fine, I better, I better go in. And I needed a referral to an optometrist, which I found out <laughs> when I got there that you actually don't need one. You can just go. So darn it. I, I probably could have avoided going. But anyways, she ordered the usual labs and I thought, okay, well, let's see where I am. May as well get this over with. The lab uh, flagged it. Uh, now, I luckily I have the online account where I can go in and see my results. Be, you know, I, I'm pro she probably hasn't even seen them yet because she only works part time. I suspect that sometime over the next week I'll get a phone call from her. But when I went online to look at my report, the report was sitting there and it had the big red exclamation mark beside it. And my heart kind of sank. I was like, uh-oh, they flagged it. And it was, be, it was for cholesterol. So I'm not that worried. Just spoiler alert, not that worried. Um, so my total cholesterol. Now, we in Canada, we have a different measuring unit than uh, in the U.S., but I found an online uh, calculator called MediCalc that converts uh, what measurement we use over to what the U.S. use, because I know a lot of you would hear mine and go, oh, I, that doesn't make any sense. But my total cholesterol was 6.02 Canadian. Um, that equates to 232 in the uh, measurements that the U.S. uses. So that gives you some perspective. That is not, I think 200 is kind of over 200. Your cholesterol is high. Um, so I'm not much over. Uh, so even that alone wouldn't worry about. But what was really good is that just this last couple of weeks, I happened to be reading this book from Dr. Boz, and I had just finished reading chapter 22. Chapter 22 is great because on page... Uh, 239, no, 339, page 339 and 340, she has this great chart. Uh, the five predictors of heart attack. There it is. Um, it's got like little graphics and then she has a written explanation and a list of what those five predictors of heart attack are. Not one of them is total cholesterol. Thank you very much. So what she says is that don't let the total cholesterol number scare you unless you also have all these. <laughs> so I thought, okay, what do I have? You know, let's, let's see how, how this is. So, so yes, my total cholesterol is high. But here's her five predictors of heart disease. Blood pressure. So if my blood pressure was consistently over 130, over 85, that may or may not be a problem. Now, I have a, a home blood pressure monitor. Anytime I've ever checked it, my blood pressure is 120 over 80. It's just like it just never varies. And in the doctor's office, when she, you know, requisitioned me for the lab tests, it was also 120 over 80. So I get a big check mark there. I pass that one. Her next one is morning fasting blood sugar. If it's consistently over 100, um, then that could be a problem. So they did mine. I did a fasting a blood sugar test and it was, where did it go? 4.9 Canadian, uh, which uh, equates to 88.2. So below 100. So check mark number two. 
triglycerides. And this is the thing that I think people need to look at from everything I've read. So triglycerides, if your triglycerides are over 150, that might be a problem. That might be a problem. Mine, Canadian, are 0 0.62, which equates to 54. I'm pretty safe there. Big check mark there. So that's three I've passed. HDL, good cholesterol. Um, if your HDL is low, that could also be an issue. Um, and she says less than 50. Mine was 1.56 Canadian, um, which equates to 60. So my good cholesterol is over her mark for predictor of heart disease. So four check marks. The last one freaked me out because it's a waist measurement. <laughs> that's, where, that's where I still have work to do. But uh, I, I ran and got a tape measure. So on October 1st, when I did my measurements, my waist measurement was 37. And she says that it shouldn't be over 35 for women. Uh, for men, for men, it is 40. So if your waist measurement, if you're a man and it's over 40, you know, that's something to work on. So when I read that, I went, oh, no, I'm 37. So I'm, I failed this one. But I got out the tape measure and it was 35. So this month I've lost two inches off my waist. And I was kind of feeling that. I was kind of feeling that, that you know, that it, my, my genes are looser. And so, yes, I ha I've passed all five. Now, if you're listening to this and, and you are not passing all these, <clears throat> don't freak out, don't panic. Um, these are things that can be worked on. And, you know, I, I was not there. Like, I, I'm, you know, over 10 years into low carb and, and keto. So, I, I've had a long time to work on these. <clears throat> and the high blood pressure, I'm just not worried about it. Um, I'm not looking forward to her calling me because she, I don't know if she's required to call me, um, you know, as, as like, oh, if, if your patient has an out of range test result, you're supposed to call them and recommend. She may call me to recommend a statin. <laughs> um, and and I, I will just ask her about these other things. I will just say to her, you know, my blood pressure is normal and look how low my triglycerides are and I clearly don't have any, you know, not even pre-diabetes. Like, you know, do you think this is necessary? I'm going to try that approach. Um, I don't think she'll insist. I, on, I honestly don't. She seems to, over the years, have gotten closer and closer to being a medication as a last resort type person. It's just been what I've noticed with her. I, I've had her for about 30 years. <clears throat> so I'm hoping that's how it goes. Um, but in the end, even if she says, no, I've got to prescribe this for you, I don't have to put it in my mouth and I won't. So that's, that's, it's, it's my choice. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take it from there. So I wanted to share that with you, uh, in case you have received a high blood pressure diagnosis, you know, especially for those of you that are fairly new. I have a lot of people who follow me that are my age and older and have been told by their doctors to lower their carbs or go on diabetes med or go on a cholesterol med. These are things you, you know that I think are helpful for you to know. It's not just one risk factor. I don't even think total cholesterol is a risk factor. I'm gonna link some videos down below that have helped me. I think it's a cluster of things, like these five things and cholesterol, maybe all together, it's a cluster or a bundle of factors. Not, they can't predict heart disease on one thing. Like I, I, I just don't buy it from everything I've learned and read. So I hope that's helpful to some of you out there. Lastly, before 
I go away for the week. Uh, we're coming up to the end of October. And so I'm already thinking about November and what I'm going to do in November. And um, I am leaning towards giving this 80-20 uh, uh, fat versus protein. Uh, I mentioned it in my last video when I did the Butter Bites video. I'll link that below. Um, I watched a video with Steak and Butter Gal and Dr. Bright. Uh, where she was recommending that we eat more butter as women, uh, a stick, in fact, every day. So uh, my, my issue is I'm trying to tweak it because I was eating a lot of fatty meat and uh, I feel like if I just add a stick of butter to what I'm already doing, I'm worried about weight gain. Like, I mean, bottom line, like I don't want to gain any weight. I still have weight to lose. So my November challenge for myself, and it means I'm gonna have to do some tracking, <laughs> which I hate tracking, but I'll do it even, even just to get used to the idea, okay, this is how much meat I can have if I'm gonna have all this butter. So if some of you, you know, I've heard from some of you actually, that also saw that interview and that have seen other things from other people in the carnivore space that are recommending a higher fat carnivore. I'm, I'm gonna do it with you in November. I, I'm, I'm learning about it now. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what a meal might look like for me. Um, and so I, I will be sharing a lot of that kind of thing in November, what I eat in a day, some recipes, that sort of thing. So that might help you too, if you're going that route. If what you're doing is working, don't worry about what I'm doing. <laughs> Just do what works for you. I mean, that's I've always been about, you gotta do what works for you personally and not worry about what everyone else is doing. Um, so I, slow very, I, I lose very slow. And so that's why I'm always tweaking. I'm just looking for things to do that maybe I should be doing this. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give it a try. So uh, I'll talk more about that next Tuesday because that will be, I believe, the first. Next Tuesday is November 1st. So I will definitely give my results for September, keeping my finger fingers crossed there. And uh, I know I've lost two inches in my waist. So even if that's all that happened, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, so if I, uh, yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll go over this more next Tuesday. I'll, I'll have my, my plan for November kind of finalized by then and share it with you as well as my results for October. We will see you next time. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.